Uh, we continue with our webinar. Um, so we have the next presentation from Walter de Vries from TNO. So Walter is a scientist um, at TNO in the Netherlands for three and a half years. He has a master's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Twente in the, in the Netherlands. And on the experimental side, he has been responsible for integration, commissioning, and experimental campaigns of multiple steam generating heat pumps in the Carno laboratory at TNO. So he's, he's also involved in implementing dynamic component models with the aim of creating a digital twin of a steam generating heat pump and is investigating process modifications to improve the heat pump visibility. For example, uh, superheated steam drying instead of conventional drying. So we are very happy to have Walter here. Your floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Corinne, for this uh, nice introduction. So my presentation is titled uh, Demonstration of a Full-Scale Industrial Heat Pump Producing Steam Above 140 Degrees C. I will talk about the following topics. Um, so I will give a brief introduction about TNO you know, for those of you who are not familiar with. I will tell something about the projects involved in this, uh, in this work, uh, experimental setup, test results, discussion and conclusion, and I will finally have a brief remark about the uh, follow-up project called Spirit. Um, so to start about TNO, TNO is the Dutch Organization for Applied Scientific Research. We, have a, we had a turnover of nearly 700 million in the, the past year, close to 4,000 employees, nearly all research related. Um, we have multiple facilities over the Netherlands and uh, TNO itself is divided into six different units. And um, as you can see in the infographic, the uh, scope of research is quite broad from defense to energy transition to yeah, all kinds of, uh, of topics. And then more on the uh, location where I work at, uh, I'm part of the research group uh, Sustainable Technologies for Industrial Processes, which is subdivided into multiple teams. Uh, this work is part of the thermal systems uh, expertise team, which focuses on heat pumps in thermal energy storage and also direct electrification. Uh, my colleagues are working on uh, green hydrogen production, and also CO2 capture and re reuse. Um, the photo shows our, the location of our laboratory, which is in the dunes at the, the coast of the Netherlands. Um, here we have infrastructure where we can test uh, heat pumps from 10 kilowatt thermal up to 2 megawatt thermal. Uh, we are equipped with a 1 megawatt electrical grid connection, um, and our test infrastructure uses simulated hot we simulated simulated waste heat as hot water, and uh, we um, simulate the process heat demand as low pressure steam. Um, yeah, I think this is also already touched upon by. Um, uh, Gordon in his uh, in his introduction, um, but the the why of of this project is uh, we want to uh, improve end user confidence for he applying heat pumps in um, in an industrial setting, and um, also improve the uh, availability of technology. Uh, so it, we want to improve the maturity of the heat pump market which is also further explained in a white paper written by my colleagues. And something about your projects. Uh, this work has been part of the Fuse and Kick Kickstart projects. Uh, both have a similar aim, in which is to demonstrate a full-scale industrial heat pump. We want to produce steam above uh, 140 degrees C, and the full scale is translated as about, about one megawatt thermal output power. And the heat pump used in this project is uh, designed and manufactured by Mayakawa. Uh, the, press, the compressor is from Mayakawa, Japan, and the skits have been uh, built by uh, Mayakawa Europe, located in Belgium. Um, the compressor is a oil-injected screw compressor, which features uh, tailored compressor rotors to yeah, cope with the elevated temperatures, so the increase in discharge temperature due to uh, the steam production. 
the compressor or the, the heat pump uses uh, pentane as a working medium, which is a hydrocarbon part of the group of natural refrigerants. And both the projects are financed by the top sector energy funding from the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Policy of the Netherlands. Then something about the experimental setup that is used. And in this case, the blue open arrows are water and the black closed arrows are pentane. And then starting from the buffer vessel, which is located, which is part of the test infrastructure in a laboratory. Uh, this is a electrically heated vessel of about 16 or 8 cubic meters of, of water in there. And from this vessel, we supply the waste heat using a pump, which is um, used to regulate the flow of waste heat. And then we can control the temperature of this loop using the three way valve, which is shown here. Um, and then um, yeah, to stay with the test infrastructure. So on the produced steam from the condenser steam generator is um, fed back using a control valve. So we use a control valve to control the pressure which is produced by the heat pump. And then this is then fed back into the buffer vessel, which also supplies the, um, the condensate to keep the steam generator uh, water level constant. And by doing the, the test infrastructure in such a way, uh, this allows us to uh, minimize the amount of waste or the amount of heat we need to cool from the system. So in this case, we only need to uh, cool the, uh, the electrical input power of the compressor, since this is the only energy that's actually added to the system. Uh, then going to the pentane side, so within the uh, the pressure inside the evaporator is controlled using an expansion valve shown here. And uh, since pentane is a so-called, um, I should say this correctly, the, it's a so-called wet compression refrigerant, you need quite a lot of superheat at the suction side of the compressor. So that's why this heat pump is equipped with a uh, internal heat exchanger, which uses um, heat from the uh, from the pentane from the condensed pentane and adds this to the suction side of the compressor so uh, what we and this three-way valve controls the superheat on the suction side of the compressor so we normally we would have about 35 kelvins of super of, of superheat um, the compressor is uh, equipped with a so-called superfeed port which we um, which means we can use an economizer shown down here to inject um, superheated pentane vapor at a slightly higher pressure than what than the pressure in the evaporator, and this slightly increases efficiency. And then, what does such a system look like? Uh, so this is a photo taken during the the build. Or to the, during the integration phase of the of the heat pump, uh, the buffer vessel I mentioned just now is shown in the back here, and then the heat pump are these two skids shown in the front. So here we have the compressor, electrical motor, etc. And then something about the results. Uh, so here I here I show eleven different tests that we did, and each test is the average of about 20 to 30 minutes of running the, the, the heat pump at a stable condition after allowing enough time for the full system to uh, get into a thermodynamic steady state so everything is up to temperature and no um, yeah, no heat losses are uh, or no no transient behavior is present anymore um the Fourth test, uh, which is shown in bold, is the, the design condition of the heat pump. Here we use a, a water source or a heat source temperature of 91 degrees, which I should mention is on the water side. And then the um, heat sink temperature is the is 140 degrees, which is uh, the, the saturation temperature of the steam produced, which corresponds to about uh, 2.5 bar gauge. And then at this compressor speed of, of at the compressor speed of 2700 RPM, we can produce about 800 kilowatts of steam with a coefficient of performance of about 2.4. Um, 
and then we can also calculate the fraction of Carnot COP since and the reason we use Carnot COP is that we only have a small glide on both sink and source side. Uh, the definition is given here at the top. And then we get a fraction of Carnot COP, which is of about 30%. Um, then for the economizer, um, so the difference between the test 10 and 11 is uh, test 10 is without economizer and test 11 is with the economizer enabled. And this test was done at quite a high temperature lift, so from 77 up to 140 degrees. Um, and we see that enabling the economizer gives us about 140 kilowatts of extra heating duty and also increases our COP by about uh, 0.2 which is a yeah, good effect, I'd say. Um, here I've shown the same results, but in a different or in a more graphical way. Uh, on the left hand side, there is heating duty in kilowatts versus the temperature lift in Kelvin. And what you can see is that uh, the, or what the, the, the horizontal spread is mostly caused by the different sink and source temperatures that we used. So it, in general, the, the lower heat sink duties are caused by relatively low source temperatures, which result in a low density at the suction side of the compressor and a low, ma and low pentane mass flow. Um, and then for the coefficient of performance versus temperature, if we see the, uh, the typical yeah, li nearly linear behavior of uh, decreasing COP versus temperature lift. And also the economizer result is shown with the star, which is slightly higher than the uh, yeah, non-economized result. We also uh, did a dynamic test. And here we what we did is we varied the uh, steam demand from uh, a normalized 100% uh, stepwise downwards until 55%. And then uh, after about 110, 150 minutes, we uh, uh, rapidly increased the steam demand. It's a, almost a step change. And we wanted to see how the heat pump would behave. So uh, what we want is a, a constant steam pressure or the control of the heat pump is used to maintain a constant steam pressure. And the way the, the, the heat pump does this is by modulating the compressor speed and um, yeah, what we can see here in the bottom left is that the steam production is reflected by the, or reflects the normalized steam demand. Um, and then when we go back up in, uh, in demand, they is first a peak, which is a flashing of, uh, of water, which is already present in the steam generator due to the, uh, due to the pressure drop. But then it takes about uh, 50 minutes for the uh, steam pressure to recover to the previous value, which I think is a is a really good result. Then some discussion and conclusions. Um, so in general, we can conclude that the high temperature heat pump manufactured by Mayakawa has been successfully integrated and tested at the Canoe, Canoe laboratory of TNO. Uh, we have tested or mapped the complete uh, operating range of the heat pump. Uh, here we have seen that the heating duty shows a strong dependence on source temperature and temperature lift. Uh, for lower source temperatures, so in the 50, 60, 70, deg 70 degrees range, uh, butane might be a better uh, working medium, uh, but also for extreme temperature lifts, so 100, and above, we saw that a two-stage system, which is also shown in some of the other presentations, um, yeah, might be interesting as well. Uh, we also identified some areas of, uh, of improvement uh, due to the tailored rotors that were used. Uh, we saw a, a reduced volumetric efficiency when compared to literature. Um, so I think there's some improvement uh, to be made here. Uh, we also saw uh, a relatively high uh, approach temperature in the heat exchangers. Um, and approach temperature is the, the minimal difference between the two temperatures. Um, 
on the hot and on the cold side of a heat exchanger. Um, so here we, the, in the, the test campaign, we saw uh, Kano COPs of about 24 to 34% uh, when using these external temperatures. But if we use the temperatures on the pentane side, then uh, we see a Cano COP of about 40%. So I think we can conclude that the, that the compressor performance is okay, but then the, the, the heat exchanges need slightly more, uh, need some more engineering or more improvement. Um, so in next steps will be that the, uh, the, the TNO laboratory has been, uh, as of the, the, the testing at the TNO laboratory has been finalized and uh, the heat pump will be transported back to Mayakawa to be retrofitted. Uh, we are based on all the lessons learned from the experimental campaign, and then it will be uh, yeah, prepared for uh, for final installation at an end user. And also uh, a heat pump of similar design is under construction in the European uh, Spirit project. And we have a very brief slide on. So the Spirit project is a Euro Horizon Europe uh, project, and um, the. Uh, Mayagawa is also involved in uh, uh, designing and manufacturing a heat pump at a shrimp uh, or shrimp and prawn plant. Uh, here, steam at 145 degrees is used for uh, cooking, which is currently produced by a propane boiler. And what we uh, what we are working on is uh, a cascade heat pump with ammonia and pentane. And then waste heat from the refrigeration plant is used as a heat source, and the heat pump will produce about 700 kilowatts at 145 degrees C. That was it from my side. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Walter, for this very nice presentation on uh, pentane heat pump.